and 44. Since Christ ascended, he's already been in the Holy of Holies in heaven, interceding for us. Plus, if God is determining who is worthy of eternal life based on keeping commandments, that's opposite to the gospel. We are saved by grace through faith, not by keeping the commandments. Number six. Hey everybody, welcome back again to another video. Welcome back. Um, before we begin, take a moment and hit that subscribe button and that like button and that notification bell. And of course, let me know what you think in the comment section down below as well. So, today we're going to talk about something very interesting. This is actually how it began. God was like, hey Mario, you need to make one more video. <laughs> and I said, okay, just going to close my eyes and then whatever passage I fall on, I'm going to talk about that. And have you guys ever heard of people quoting Ephesians chapter 2 where it says that, for it is by grace you've been saved through faith, um, not of yourself, but it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay. I fell on that passage, and God said to myself, God said to me, um, I want you to actually do a little study on that chapter. A quick study, not too deep, just a quick study. And I actually found something very interesting in this chapter. Do you guys realize most people that use this verse is for two reasons. One, they usually use that verse to go against Seventh-day Adventist teachings. Or two, it is because they keep believing that the law of God is no longer binding. Well, I actually find something interesting in that same part from verse 1 through verse number 10. And we're going to actually read that right now. So, <laughs> let's get active. It begins like this. In verse number 1, usually... They don't read from verse number 1. They just read verse 8 and 9. But they disregard verses 1 through 7. But we're going to read from verse number 1. And see what the Bible actually is saying here. Bible says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Now, Bible says, Jesus has quickened us who were dead in trespasses and sin. What is a trespass? What is sin? Sin is the transgression of the law. First, um, first John 3, verse 4. Okay? So, Jesus has quickened us who were transgressing or trespassing the law. Okay? Remember, this chapter, this section is by grace through faith. Verse number two. Wherein in the wherein in past time ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit now that now worketh in the children of disobedience. In a sense, before Jesus Christ quickened us and took us from trespassers, from sinners to saints, we used to walk according to the world. We used to walk according to the devil. The power of the, the prince of the power of the air, this is the devil. We used to work in disobedience. To what? Disobedience to God's law. Because sin, because we were there in sin, Sin is the transgression of the law. We know for sure the devil is not living according to God's law. So if we are walking according to the devil, which is the prince of the power of the air, which is still worketh in the children of disobedience, 
and we are no longer children of we are no longer called children of disobedience. That means we are called children of obedience. To what? To God's law. Verse number three. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. What Paul is saying is that before Christ pulled us out of this, we used to have conversations about the lust of our flesh. We used to, oh, remember Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, It was told of you of old, if you, you shall not commit adultery. But I say unto you, whosoever looks at a woman and lusts after her, has already committed adultery in her, in his heart. Actually, let me get you guys the um, right passage on that. Um, it's in the book of Matthew. It's in the Matthew chapter 5, verse number 27. Verse number 27. And he, said also, and he says that, actually, let me, let, me, let me bring it in here for you. Um, Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, verse number 27, Bible says this, It was told, ye have heard, it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit what? Adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman, or a man too, to lust after her, or him, hath committed adultery with her, or with him, in his or her heart. Which means, in the time past, remember, in the time past, what did we do? We used to live according to the flesh, to the desire of the flesh. And we know in the book of Galatians, in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, we have what is the, what, oh, oh, what is the work of the flesh? It's, Ado the first thing is adultery. Lusting. That's how you get adultery. You lust. And adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, which one? You, got, you, you, know, you, you know the list. But number one mentioned is adultery. And here, guys, here in chapter 2 of Ephesians, guess what? The first thing that is mentioned here. Our conversation in time past was what? In the lust of the flesh. But the lust of the flesh is adultery, fornication, and all those homosexuality as well, and all those filthy things. Which means we used to walk according to the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we just read what the desires of the flesh is. Let me show it to you again. Galatians chapter 5, verse number 20 and 21. The works of the flesh are manifest with what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, wrath. You get the point. Okay? It is very interesting that how God is showing me this. Verse number... Now, we were, right? And we were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, meaning those who are walking in disobedience to God's law, these are children of wrath. These are walking according to the prince of the power of the air. Understand this. Meaning, you can't call yourself a Christian and have a open war against God's commandment. All of the Ten Commandments. Verse number four. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherein wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. Now, understand. What does God, what does Christ do to those whom he has quickened? 
verse number one, verse number two. When we were, he has quickened us. Why? We were dead in trespasses, which means when he quickened us, we are no longer children of disobedience, which means we should walk in obedience. Because we were dead in trespasses and sin, we know sin is the transgression of the law. If God, through Christ, has quickened us out of this lifestyle, out of this obedience, that means through Christ we can obey the law. Oh, did you guys ever see that? I didn't see that either. Verse number 6. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Isn't that interesting that the people who like to use Ephesians chapter 2, actually not done yet, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of work, lest any man should boast. And they stop right there. But the Bible says next, verse 10, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto what? Good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. What are the good works? Before sin. We were supposed to walk in obedience to God's commandment before sin. Before sin. Actually, I want to know what the word workmanship is. Things that is made, basically that is made a product. So, we as Christians, when Christ, when God, through Christ, has quickened us from what? Sins and trespasses, because we know sins is the transgression of the law. When God has quickened us from sin, we were supposed to work, to do what? To no longer work as children of disobedience, but we were supposed to be working as children of obedience. Working. Why do I use the word working? Because the same spirit, because the devil, his spirit, worketh in the children of disobedience. Guess what? The Holy Spirit cannot work in the children of disobedience. This is why we are his workmanship. This is why we are his workmanship. Because it is God that works in us to do both will and do of his good pleasure. So our works should testify of his grace for us. Why? Because he had saved us from sin. So can you say, for it is by grace ye are saved through faith in the of yourself, and yet say that God's law is no longer important, we can break it as much as we want? Really? Why would you be living in disobedience to God when you know God has quickened you and me from sin. What is sin? Transgression of the law. Which means if God has quickened us, he took us out of that transgression of the law. That's the way of him telling us, I want you, by my power, to obey my law. And because of God's love and what Jesus Christ had done for us, we will be moved to be willing to obey God's law. 
That's the funny thing. Most people that like to go to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 89, they never read the whole part. To see, no, we came from this to here. We can't go back to this. Because of this, we were sinners. God took us out of sin. We can't say God's law is no longer binding. Because if you are breaking God's law again, even though you know what he has done for you, oh man, you can't say you are a child of obedience. No. You know what? Let me leave you with this little analogy. Let's say you're driving the speed uh, down the highway. Speed limit is 75. And you're doing 90. And there was a state trooper and he pulls you over. Right? And he says, hey, you broke the law. Basically, you sin. Basically, you are what we call the children of disobedience. Right? Yeah. Then, he says, you know what? No problem. I'm going to give you grace. I'm going to give you grace um, this time. When he gave you grace, when he should have given you the penalty of breaking the speed limit law, when you, when you were leaving, did you just slam on that um, accelerator pedal, um, the, the, the gas pedal? So much you started burn out and throwing rocks at his car? No. What did you do? You're like, oh man, he has given me grace. Oh, that even more encouraging for me to actually obey the law. You live slowly because you realize the penalty you are going to pay, but he gives you grace. That pushes you to not go fast. This is what being saved by grace through faith means. It does not give you the license to reject God's law and say, it was nailed to the cross. This is the devil bringing that into your mind. That's it for me today. Let me know what you guys think in the conversation below. Like I said, God randomly put me through that verse or through that passage to give you guys something new. Again, don't forget to hit that like button. And the, and the subscribe button as well as that notification bell it was the open bird tv hope to see you guys again until then bye for now